All right, so uh, let's create a particle system. All right, so this is our default particle system. Um, yeah, that's it. Just basically creates an ellipsoid particle emitter, uh, the particle animator, and a particle renderer. There are more components to the particles. There is a uh, mesh particle emitter. So instead of say just a random sphere or ellipsoid. Um, you can actually have particles coming off your character or a tree or a house or whatever. Um, you could get burning buildings that way if you wanted to. Um, there's also uh, there is a world particle collider which um, let's say you wanted to keep the particle uh, effect inside a room or you wanted, say, your particle effect to climb up the wall, you could use the particle collider, and it will literally just, the particle effect will go around whatever objects there are in the world that have a collider on them. Um, there's also a trail render, and what it can do is basically, it's basically, you could create effects like, uh, that trail that follows the the Tron vehicles or stuff like that. Um, that's you. You could have streams like just stuff like that. All right. So let's get started on what each of these things do. Emit. Shockingly enough, if it's turned off, it doesn't emit. Who would have guessed, right? And if you turn it back on. Oh my god, it turns back on. Uh, shocker there. Now, the min size and max size. Um, another one that kind of speaks for itself, if we increase this to 1, it's going to spawn particles basically anywhere in between min size and max size. Uh, we set this to 1, 2. Now we got just giant clumps. So we'll put that back down to 0.1. Uh, min energy and max energy is how long the particle lasts. If we go 1 and then say 5, the, part is, or the particles are going to last anywhere between 1 and 5 seconds. That's all that means. And then our emission is the amount of particles that are going to be spawning. So if we set this to like 50,000, we're just going to have a mass of particles. Just filling up the whole screen. Uh, I wouldn't set it to 50,000. It kind of puts a bit of a drain on your system. Basically, you should be using the least amount of particles to get your effect across. All right. So your world velocity is literally just how fast it's moving and in what direction. So we set 1, 1, 1. They just kind of fly off into the corner. Simple enough. Uh, local velocity is similar. If we set it to 111, they also fly off into the corner. Except in this case, if we were to rotate the particle effect, it actually rotates the entire direction that the particles move. Fancy. All right, reset rotation. All right, now the random velocity. Say we set this to five, five, five. These particles are going to fly anywhere between plus or minus whatever number you enter. So this, the velocity in the z direction will be anywhere between negative five and five, and same with x and y. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, the emitter velocity scale is really <coughs> it's really like basic it's basically the amount of the emitter speed that uh, the particles pick up so let's say you have uh, this object moving um, basically uh, Let's say we set this to like seven or something. I'm actually not sure if it'll actually work there. 
Now it won't. Um, basically what it does if, is if you have this game object moving, actually, no it won't. If you have this game object moving um, and simulate in world space is set, um, this will inherit whatever speed the object is moving at. So let's say it's moving at one unit and you set this to one, the particles are going to move along with it. Um, if you set it to two, the particles are going to move faster than the actual object itself. Uh, the reason it's set to 0.05 is just so, you know, kind of just sits there. Uh, the tangent velocity is basically uh, the x, y, and z of the face of whatever object. I'm not sure how it calculates it in this ellipsoid, but... Uh, yeah, it just kind of shoots stuff off everywhere. Alright, now the angular velocity. Let's say we set this to 180. You'll notice, okay, 810, sure. Uh, you'll notice that the particles start spinning. Um, so, yeah, the angular velocity is just literally just how fast the particles spin. Uh, it's really good for getting smoke, um, stuff like that going. Uh, the random angular velocity. Same thing, really, except it'll be anywhere between plus or minus 360 or whatever you enter in there. So you have some particles moving slowly this way. You got this one here moving pretty fast. You got other particles moving the other way. That's just what random angular velocity does. Random rotation uh, will just spawn the particles at a random rotation. So you see uh, we have these just kind of scattered all over the place. Uh, simulate in world space. Okay. Basically, if we turn this off and we move this around, the particles will follow it perfectly. If we turn it on, the particles will stay where they are spawned. Basically, if we turn this off, it parents all the particles to the game object. Uh, one shot is uh, basically it will just spawn all the particles. At at once, just one quick thing, and it'll be over with. And the ellipsoid is the uh, size of the object that we are spawning them on. So if we set this to zero, it's just a little tiny clump there. If we set this to, say, five, we have a pretty big area that we can spawn stuff in. And the minimeter range is pretty cool you can if you set the three we will now have this gap in here so you can create some really cool effects so if you want to create like shields or something to surround your player this is a really easy way to do that 